We're in front of the Tree Art Wood Carvers in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. I'm standing here at the Tree Art Chainsaw Carving um, location in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee with Harley and he's been working on a bear with a chainsaw cutting away the wood to produce something beautiful. So Harley, tell us a little bit about the process that goes into carving. There's uh, really three basic steps to carving out a resemblance of an animal or a person. You got your first one's called blocking and that's where you're just getting your basic shape, you know, where your arms are going to be, no, no details yet. Then you have posting. Posting is your muscle structure that sits upon that blocking, you know, the little dips and tweaks for this and that, you know, shape of the cheek or an eye, ridge, uh, the ears, the detail. A lot of people think they've got things done when it's blocked and posted, but it's got a long ways to go. And then your final is your detail and texture. And that's, you know, going to be your fur, your hair, uh, going into your eyes, your nose, things like that. So, you know, it's, it can be broken down pretty simple, really. This is Holly Doan. Uh, she is a co-owner of Tree Art. She's the wife of her that is the owner. Uh, and she does the detail work on every bear, every piece that is carved here. She does the detail, the ceiling, the painting. I mean... We, we really couldn't do this as fast or as nicely as what we're doing if it wasn't for Holly. Jerry's a wood carver and he's going to give us a nutshell version of how um, you take the wood and chop away the part that's not needed to create something beautiful. Well, I just kind of get a piece of wood and start out, uh, visualize what can be you know, put into the piece of wood. But you just take your chainsaw and start cutting away and blocking out. And you take away the pieces you don't need to, you know, make a bear or make an eagle or make a face or whatever you're working on at the time. And it's kind of kind of the way God does things too, is he kind of kind of chips away at you all your life and, until he gets you formed into what, you know, God wants you to be as a, as a child of God. Well, wood carvers, you know, I say it's real similar to that. Also, you just take away what you don't want there anymore. And you go from there. Thank you. There you go. Wood carvers use a variety of tools to remove unnecessary material from their sculptures. In a similar way, God works in our lives, sometimes using adversity, to remove things that are unwanted in order to shape us to be the beautiful person He intends for us to be. So they want to take me in right away and do the open heart surgery right from that, and I wouldn't allow it. I had to have a day where I had to go I had to do things. I had to get things right. I had to think about it because it was a big, you know, it's a big procedure to have that done. And uh, I left the hospital. And I came, I, I was gone for one day and I went back in and, and they'd done the open heart and everything. And, and so, I mean, it's okay. It's just been a long, been a long journey. But it, it, well, I wasn't done. I mean, I knew I wasn't going to die. If I was going to die, I would have died five months ago in Florida. So God held me, you know, God held his hand on me and kept me alive until man intervened and, to, you know, fixed my heart and done all the bypasses. And uh, so it's a good thing. It's a good thing. I'm not done. And I'm healing. I'm going to be fine. It's going it's to be great. So don't y'all ever give up. <laughs> now, something else I wanted to add it to that, that, that what I do is absolutely a God-given talent. Without God, there's no way I could do this. He gives me the ability in my heart and in my mind to see and look into the wood so that I know what can be brought out of the wood. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his.